After a month of hard work, our guest bathroom is really starting to take shape, and we are making some exciting and major changes this week by installing the penny tile and bringing in our restored vintage clawfoot tub. Welcome back to episode three of Making Over Our Guest Bathroom, which used to be a kitchen. It has come a long way. We've done DIY, selected the paint, put up beadboard on here. We have all of our faucets and hardware and things. So this week we are focusing on tile. We are doing penny tile. I've also tested all the grout. I tested two colors. This is the penny tile. I tested two colors and we went with What's it called? Chestnut brown, which has more of an undertone of red in it, which matches the paint more. So we are doing a contrasting grout in here. We're focusing on the tile and also bringing in our vintage clawfoot tub, which I'll show you. Also putting in all of the faucets. <laughs> Pretty thing. Since the tile is gonna go on this wall, I want it to go up to the trim that's around the window. So the window design in the 110 year old house had a plinth which is new word this thing this is also around the bottom of the door so it was the same design on the window so it's the plinth then the trim goes up to the corner and then there's the rosette button corner on the top and the plinth sits on top of an indoor window sill that i need to build um, because all of these windows were kind of like put together and joined, so I need to make one of those. And then on the bottom, there's another rosette on the bottom of the sill, and then another piece of trim that runs across the other side to another rosette. So we need to put all of that up so that we can bring the tile into it, because I don't want these to sit on top of the tile. <laughs> I might be changing course. I'm thinking it's gonna be really hard to get the grout into these like skinnier areas around the window trim. Instead of actually installing it, maybe put it up there and like trace a line, then bring the tile so that it's not in the way. I can bring the tile to that line and then put the trim up and then caulk a seam in between the two. I'm all about it being easier to tile for sure. So our first step is to put down a concrete backer board on the wood floor where the tile is going. Everything I've read online is don't adhere tile to wood because wood naturally expands and contracts over time and then it could crack our tile. Uh, so I bought this quarter inch, just a little bit of a raise just to make it concrete on the bottom underneath the tub where the tile is going. We're gonna lay that down and nail it in. You could also do it with screws and I'll list the ones that um, I did pick up, but we have a concrete T nailer, nailed it in. And then we're gonna get started laying out all of the penny tile and kind of creating our pattern. I have 14 boxes of penny tile. We did all of the measurements when we initially bought the tile. Oh, 10 pieces per carton. Coverage area per carton is 10.6 square feet. So we did the math and we needed 14 boxes. Every tutorial that I've seen <laughs> online about laying penny tile, everyone lays out the penny tile first and they get all their pieces cut, they lay it all out, this tile doesn't require us to use spacers because it's on this netting, so it naturally spaces the penny tile apart. It's actually really pretty. I got it at Floor & Decor, um, so it was a readily available penny tile. It has alternating shiny and matte penny tiles, and I thought it was really pretty, and it's really pretty with a contrasting grout. So let's lay it out. Let's figure out our plan of attack, at least for the floor. I'm definitely thinking I want the edges cut. Um, so when we lay it out, I want to kind of put it away from the wall. The object is to make sure that you can't see where one piece stopped and the other piece started. Luckily, I have an insane ability <laughs> to pay attention to small details. New tool I've never used. We rented a wet tile saw. You have to cut tile with a wet diamond blade, um, otherwise it'll crack and 
crazy things. We've always lived in apartments, so we've never gotten the opportunity to do this. There's a first time for everything. I think it's fairly easy, but my dad did say that once you cut the side of tile, it could be really sharp. So get some tile gloves. So we got these like um, kind of cut proof tiling. So we're gonna use these and we are gonna test it on this piece. <laughs> We have to, so how this works is you fill this trough with water and it has a plug to drain it after. You just fill it with water, making sure that this is submerged, this little thing that pumps the water and throws the water onto the blade. Turn it on and cut. That's basically what I know. Okay, we have water. Let's try it. And did I do it right? This is our first attempt. It, I mean, it's cut, but it's like not like perfectly straight. Am I being, like, does it just get covered up? Should I test it again? Did I go too slow? I mean, I think that's acceptable. This one's acceptable. Yeah, that one, I think you went too slow. And it's so small. No, I went faster and it cracked oh. worse. Okay, maybe we can go slow then. Go slow? Okay, let me test this, uh, where this needs to go. This side's fine, this side cracks. You see that? This side looks okay. That looks good, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. We're learning. I am way too much of a perfectionist for this. <laughs> or maybe that'll make me a great tiler too. Okay, I got all of it cut perfect, the pieces here. So now, what I saw someone do online that was actually really helpful, I stacked all the tiles for each row at the end. So it was really easy to just trowel the thin set on and then lay the new piece down. Um, so everything was kind of in order. I, I wanna do that. <laughs> I want to do that. We are using Versa Bond Professional Thin Set Mortar. I just got this at Home Depot. I got it in gray, it comes in gray and white. I got it in gray because we're going with a darker grout color in here. So just, if you're going with a lighter grout color, you can get white. This kind of helps like a primer does. Um, and I have an empty bucket, a bucket full of water, our trowel to put on the thin set, and then the float. Um, this is uh, basically for our grout, um, but I also it also helps to press the tile down like I probably did on the sample. We're gonna mix up the thin set into a creamy peanut butter. So we red. Let me do this um, layout. I drew lines on the floor. I know that I'm kind of not be, gonna be able to see this line once I put thin set on it, but I think that that's a good place to start. At least I know that that's straight. So let's do it. Show me what it's like to be circling among the clouds. Because without you by my side. I would be stuck here on the ground You're lighting up the way I can see the road ahead of me Lesson learned, I had way too much, way too much um, thin set, so I had to pick it up and scrape it off a little bit. So you want, to, you want enough, I have to remember, you want enough to stick it, but not so it oozes through the, the cracks. We're gonna keep going just like that. I think it looks really good. I'm just like a perfectionist. So I'm gonna keep stepping back from it before it dries to make sure that the gap between the, each piece is like all even, because I'll be able to see something like that. Some things I learned after this process. You need to have some kind of like wet rag um, by because I felt like I was getting the mortar on my hands and then I was getting the mortar on my on the tile. Um, I was washing my hands after every row, just like keeping them wet, but just like rinsing them off because I was just getting them everywhere. Then you need like a cloth or something to wipe off the thin set, the mortar off of the tile so it doesn't dry on top of it. I don't know if that's gonna be a big deal to clean later. I just would rather get it off now while it's still wet. The mortar doesn't dry super fast, um, but it does dry quote unquote fast, but not while you're laying your pieces. So I was able to lay all of my pieces out, not 
really paying much attention to like how close they were to the next piece so that I could get the whole row out, make sure it was straight on each edge because that's how I cut it and laid it out, then zhuzh them to fit. So I was doing a lot of zhuzhing. It is finally time to attempt to grout this penny tile. It's been drying for a few days because I've actually been working on other projects other four projects. So I'm kind of working on so many projects at once. It gives me the time to let things dry really well, even though it really only needed to dry for 24 hours. I did have a dream that uh, it all fell off the wall, <laughs> but I did it, it's still stuck, it looks really good. For my first attempt at penny tile, I think I'm, I'm proud and that's the most, I'm proud and that's the most important. Okay, so we are to the grouting stage. So this product is called permacolor color is chestnut brown we're going to be mixing it with water and it's the same consistency that i've been using and doing for the thin set to stick these tiles so it's like a creamy peanut butter but there's a couple of things that we have to do first clean the tiles and everything make sure that they're clean mix up the grout wait five minutes and then we're going to start okay so I got the big bag. I'm already so dirty. I've been doing other floor stuff. Okay, so this is my empty bucket. This one has water in it. So I'm gonna empty this whole bag. I have one, two, three, four, five. I have six bags, which is what I calculated I needed for this space. Two to two and a quarter quarts of water. I don't know how much that is. I'm just gonna keep adding water and mixing it until I have a peanut butter Pretty peanut butter consistency. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna start back here. So instead of using a trowel, I have this thing. This is called an extra large gum rubber float. I'm just gonna go for it and see. I, the object, obviously, is to just make sure it gets in all the cracks. So I, um, I saw the pictures, it kind of wiped it on there and pushed it in kind of thick, and then came back and kind of scraped it off and kind of kept going. So that's what I'm gonna do. And cross my fingers. And if it doesn't work, I'll fix it. I'm just making sure that I have enough on there, you know? Like that every little crack filled. almost 30 minutes and that's how long it took me to put the whole bag of grout on this wall so the whole bag of grout did the whole bottom row and also up this wall the bag says to wait 30 minutes and then start wiping it I don't know if it's like you need to wipe it off in 30 minutes or just wait 30 minutes after 30 minutes but I'm not gonna chance it and it's almost been 30 minutes so definitely an arm workout <laughs> Yeah, it's already starting to dry on top. It's still able to get off, but it's definitely drier. It's also like 95 degrees today. <laughs> This morning I did a final wipe down to get all of the rest of the just residue, the grout residue off. We are tiled, we are grouted, we need to seal it. So I stopped by the hardware store this morning and picked up this one. I did some research. There were two types of this one. There was a water-based 
and a non-water based maybe it's oil i'm not sure um the other one lasted longer it said up to 20 years 25 years i think this is the water-based one this one's up to 10 years i opted to get this one because it's water-based it has low voc it's not as stinky and this this tile is never going to get direct water contact there is just a tub with a handheld shower situation in here there's not water that's going to spray from the wall down onto the tile or on the tile in general so i didn't think that i needed that and i just wanted to try this one out i believe this little bottle was not cheap this little bottle was like 30 something dollars what to do is wipe it out shake it shake it shake 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 it and then apply it evenly to surface until damp using a their applicator a clean white cotton towel paint roller or paint brush and then leave on the surface for three to five minutes for a maximum penetration before removing all excess product with a white clean towel before it dries it's not, it's not too stinky kind of stinky not too stinky i'm liking using the paintbrush more so i'm going to pour this into a little cup And then I'll do a section and wipe it off with the clean towel. Oh, that's pretty easy, you guys. Oh, I'm doing it right. I would say like a little, a little more than half. I have like this much left. So I have plenty. We're also gonna be using this same one, if not the stronger one, for the floors in the bathroom and the laundry. So now it is time to do the trim around the windows. And I'm thinking, I've contemplated a lot on the color. I contemplated it, and I think ultimately what we decided on is the trim's gonna look best in the brown color. for that so I took two of these the bottom pieces and I, I shaved some of it off so that I could kind of create my own when they're put together like that kind of created my own wider trim that matched the rest because I use the salvage boards I kind of like it <laughs> I'm thinking it's gonna work so it's gonna look something like Okay, so we are building the windowsill for the inside. I wrote my measurements on the back of a, probably an important uh, letter that I got, who cares? <laughs> so there are my measurements and I transferred my measurements onto the board. That's how my brain kind of works. Just helps me to see the measurement and kind of hold it up to the window and take a look. I'm like, is this gonna look right <laughs> before I cut it? Then we'll use a jigsaw to go in and do the smaller, more angled cut. I'm even softening the edges with some 60 grit sandpaper just to make it look like the other ones. Like it had some, it didn't have harsh corners, it had softened edges. So that's what I'm doing. Always a guessing game whether it's gonna fit or not. Oh, for a second I was like, wait, no way this is gonna fit. This is totally wrong. Oh, oh, okay. I think I need to slim down these sides. Okay, now let's see. Oh, much better. So just like I did the other trim and the walls and everything that we're gonna paint dark, I'm painting it with a tinted primer. So it's tinted in gray so that it gives a better base, darker base to the dark brown color. Now, even though this was previously painted, it was still white. 
and I caulked all of the edges. Didn't take me too long. Um, so I'm gonna prime it, let that dry. One coat of Tudor Brown or two, depending on how it looks. And most of the time I like to paint two coats on trim. Okay, I'm going in with the Tudor Brown. Let's hope that this is the, the right choice. I'm feeling like yes. I've already committed to it, so I'm, I'm thinking it's a yes. I'm already seeing that I'm going to have to do two coats. You guys, we have a clawfoot tub. This is a restored clawfoot tub for the guest bathroom. I think it used to be blue some shade of blue, um, but I got it from um, the flea market. We would go to the flea market every month, the Fredericksburg flea market, and there was always a guy that restored vintage tubs or uh, sinks and stuff. Um, so he sent me a whole bunch of pictures of the ones that he had and was already working on, and I picked this one. This is a five and a half. The most common is five foot. This is a five and a half. The rarer ones are like six, maybe even bigger than that, but they're a lot more expensive. So we went with five and a half because I felt like that was a good, good size. And it's flat on the back here. And here are the feet. Look how pretty. So it's finally time to move her in. I've been kind of going like this, trying to get her over there. It is 300 pounds. This is the only way I can do it is just like moving it from side to side, like snaking it. But I can do it. Mom's mad at me for moving the tub and not telling her when she was in the bathroom. I know that this slides in like that. It just takes us a little longer. Exactly. You have to work smarter, not hard. Okay. Where did you put it? On the uh no. in front of it. On top. Oh. Okay, one more. <gasps> Take two. Like, we're supposed to be doing smart things, mama. Fine. Okay. We need to get higher. freely here which is nice and it's just in far enough away and I feel like that's perfect so now you guys are probably wondering like hey, you don't have a drain for, for your tub because I closed it because it was in the wrong spot because I needed to do this um, so I tiled over it so now we can determine exactly where it needs to be when the plumber comes here and then I'll cut it like, if, I, if I break any around I have more tiles and I have more mortar and I'll just fix it you know what I mean if you guys remember way back when we ordered all of our like plumbing, hardware, things like that, like our faucets, we did order toilets and tubs, obviously, but there was one toilet <laughs> in particular 
that I loved and I was in love with the toilet and it, she wasn't cheap. We saved way more than the toilet costs on doing all of the glass ourselves in the house. We saved $8,000 by replacing all the panes of glass because they were gonna charge me $100 in labor per pane. Just in this bathroom, it would have been two, four, six, 800 bucks. So just by me replacing the glass that needed to be replaced in this bathroom, paid for this toilet. So I justified it. I'm like, I saved the money there so I could put the money where we do things. <sighs> I'm so excited, you guys. Now, obviously, we have the connection, um, but I obviously think I need my plumber to, he's coming next weekend, so he's gonna be like actually installing all of this stuff. We're just putting it where it goes. Oh, hi. There's definitely a hole there, so we're just, I'm just gonna put her here. Okay, so that's the bottom. So this is a two-piece toilet. All the important stuff in here. You see how it's silver right now? And I'm gonna get it plated the same as the faucet. See, it's all silver. And it like, this is how you flush it. You pull it up. <laughs> I love this so much. <laughs> She's obviously not in the right place. And if this breaks, I will die. So this is just for now. This bathroom, <laughs> the first space that we have made over in this house that it actually looks like you could live here. You know what I mean? Like you could actually like use the bathroom. <laughs> it's giving me life. It's the vision is starting to come together. This was staring. I feel like going with a darker pink color, doing this much penny tile with a contrasting grout. Just seeing the space start to come together and how calm and warm and it has so much contrast yet it's so subtle to me in a lot of ways is absolutely beautiful. I am so excited about the progress, but we still have a lot to do. There is one more episode in this series of making over our guest bathroom, taking it from an old rundown kitchen to a beautiful guest bathroom. We have to do a DIY cabinet here for, you know, towels, pretty things. We have to actually hang the mirror, get the granite, install the light because we're actually getting electricity this weekend, which is major. Yes, it's happening. We found a new electrician. I'm so excited. <laughs> um, we have to put some finish on the floors. We're working on the floors right now. We need some crown molding, some shoe molding. What else do I need to do? But it is coming along very well. I hope you guys enjoyed episode three of Making Over Our Guest Bathroom. If you've missed any of the episodes, I have a playlist linked below so that you guys can check it out. If you've missed any of the renovation videos, you can catch up on those as well. I will see you guys in next video, which will actually be restoring and laying our new floors, tile. We have been hard at work doing lots of different projects. So we're gonna flip over there, we're gonna do that, and then we're gonna pop back into the bathroom for the last episode. So you're not gonna wanna miss them. Hit the subscribe button and the little bell notification so you know exactly when I upload every week here and also over on my vlog channel for more behind the scenes. I do tons more on that, like shopping for things and things. <laughs> so go check that out and I will see you guys again in the next video. Bye guys. I love it here. I'm just gonna move into the bathroom. I mean, it's big enough, right? I can put like a little twin bed in here. Just live in the bathroom. <laughs> oh. Oh. Everything. Imagine, you know, like water coming out. That would be nice. <laughs> we don't have that yet. <laughs>